Hi, this is Steve, K-A-B-Z. In the first video, we uh, gave a demonstration of a program called Outpost Packet Message Manager and how uh, demonstrated how some of the features could be used in a packet radio emergency communications network. Uh, the remaining videos in this series will go through describing the equipment requirements, how to download and install Outpost, and configure it, and how it's actually used in an emergency communications network. Uh, but in this video, we're going to go over the equipment requirements. Uh, the eventual goal in mind is to assemble a portable packet station or a go kit for packet radio so uh, AREs and RACES operators can go to a remote location and set up a packet station to provide communications uh, uh, for served agencies. The first uh, requirement, obviously, is going to be a computer. Uh, it should be something portable. Uh, laptops are obviously the uh, machine of choice. Uh, nowadays, laptops come with limited connections for communications because they do everything through USB ports. Uh, this particular laptop is a, an older Dell running Windows XP, and it does have uh, something that you won't find on computers nowadays. It's going to have this connection. This is a RS-232 serial connector for input-output. You'll see the label over here. It might be a little hard to see, but it looks like 10101, which kind of represents data in uh, the zeros and ones in the uh, uh, bits in a byte of data. But anyhow, it's a DB9 connector. It's a male connector with nine pins. Uh, don't be confused with VGA connectors. That's a female connector with three rows of connections. The RS-232 connector has nine pins. On the, on the laptop, there'll be uh, uh, the male end of that connection. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a, have a laptop or can find one that has that, uh, that's still a very serviceable computer that's great. If it doesn't have that you'll still be able to use it if it has COM ports. Or, I'm sorry if it has USB ports as shown over here. Uh, you'll also need a terminal node controller. Now this is a Cantronics KPC3+. Plus. Uh, these are very small devices. They're, they're fairly expensive to buy new. They're around $200 maybe a little more. Uh, on the used market, uh, they're not as expensive, but these things hold their value fairly well. Even on eBay, they sell for over a hundred dollars, better than uh, getting upwards around sixty or seventy percent of the price for a new one. So, if you do see these on uh, on eBay or uh, in other used markets, uh, you can get them a little cheaper. I would get some type of guarantee that the things are functional. Uh, quite often on eBay they'll say, well it's sold as is, I don't have any way to test it. Uh, that sometimes is the case and sometimes isn't. I've had some success buying things like this on eBay that are very functional and other things that really aren't. Um, it's just a chance you'll have to take, but if you're going to take that chance on the used market that you're buying on online, like for example eBay, you might want to talk to the uh, seller and see if they will accept a return if you get it and come to find out the thing doesn't work. Uh, if you can uh, pick up a new one, so much the better. Keep an eye out for them at swaps. Uh, these don't turn up very often at swaps. Uh, in this version, you see a lot of older ones uh, that may or may not still work. Um, but if, if you want to take a chance at a swap, that's not a bad, bad deal if, you get, if the price is right. On the back side of the TNC, on this particular one, this is just a single port VHF only TNC. It's not a dual port. It's not a multi-mode. Uh, it's quite simple. It has one power connection for a 9 to 12 volt DC power source. It has the uh, DB25 connector that connects to the computer. And this is the radio port. It's the female end of the DB9 connector. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, you also need a radio. Uh, sometimes handhelds will actually do the trick. This is a 
Radio Shack HTX202 that I have used on Packet for 20 years. Uh, the thing that you would need to add to that would be an external antenna where you can actually get better range and coverage. Uh, I printed out a little white tag that I zip tied on the handle that has all the explanations of all the memory channels that are programmed in the radio, but this is a very rugged, very usable radio for packet. And it also has very simple connections for packet. Uh, so this, this is something I use. It'll work in a go kit. You're not looking at needing to have long range communications, but uh, you do need to reach the bulletin board for wherever your portable operation is going to be set up. So a mobile radio, uh, handheld, uh, will really do the trick. Uh, now this is the RS-232 serial cable you use to connect the computer to the to the TNC. Uh, this end is the female DB9 that connects to the TN, I'm sorry, that connects to the computer. If your computer has the RS-232 port, and this is the uh, DB25 connector that connects to the TNC. If your computer does not have an RS-232 COM port, you need a USB to COM port converter. That's what this is. This uses a USB port on this end to connect to the computer. On this end, there's some electronic components in the enclosure, and there's a DB9 connector on this end that will connect to the RS-232 cable that in turn connects to your computer. Or I'm sorry, that in turn connects to your TNC. So this, this runs from the computer, through the converter, through the RS-232 cable uh, to the TNC. You also need a connection uh, for the radio to the TNC. This uses a DB9 connector on the TNC and then an audio transmit and an audio receive jack. And on, on this particular handheld, it's keyed through the mic input uh, through a blocking capacitor and a, and a current limiting resistor. So uh, you need to consult the manual for your radio and or TNC for the various connections, but it's, they're fairly easy connections to make. I think I skipped a slide. Okay, this is also the antenna system. Now this antenna system uh, has been used for years on packet with that handheld radio. What I have here is just a mag mount antenna and a, this is a steel plate and the mag mount antenna just magnetically attaches to the steel plate and I place the steel plate on a flat roof and then I have a 25 foot length of coax and I have a hundred foot length of coax depending on what the need is and then on on the end of that it's hard to see here but that's a uh, uh, SO239 to BNC connector to connect to the radio and that just plugs into you disconnect the rubber antenna on the radio with a BNC connector and then plug this antenna in and if you can get by with this 25 foot of cable you limit the losses between the the radio and antenna but again, you don't need great distances. Uh, if you can reach the nearest node or digipeter, you, that's as far as you need to go. You can make all your connections, uh, radio connections from that node or, and or digipeter. So this is assuming you don't have the uh, COM port on your computer. This is the USB to COM port converter connects to that end of the serial cable. For some reason, this wants to keep skipping slides. So that connection is made, and then the other end of that RS-232 cable goes to your TNC computer connection. Then the radio cable connects to the radio port, and that plugs into the microphone and speaker jack in the handheld, in my case. Uh, keying the radio to transmit happens through the mic input, and then Everything else plugs in. The only thing left is plugging the antenna in that's on the mag mount uh, steel plate. And then from the RS-232 cable goes into an available USB port on the computer. And there's a rear view of the same, uh, same connection. And there's a overhead view and pretty much that's it for the basic connections for, uh, for connecting a basic portable packet station. And uh, 
once you have all of this equipment that you've got the basics covered of course uh, there are other things that might be required if you were operating uh, providing uh, communication support to a served agency you'd also want to have a printer because you'd need to print the messages uh, to give to the intended recipient uh, they it, they wouldn't always find it convenient to come to your location and look at the laptop screen to get their messages so printers and of course other connecting uh, hardware cables and connectors and all sorts of things uh, can be added to that but that's the basics to get you started uh, with your portable packet station so with that in the next uh, Next in this series of uh, videos, we'll show you how to download the software that's going to be required. It's free on the internet. There's no registration fee. It's a very good software called Outpost Packet Message Manager. And we'll go through downloading and installing that software. And then uh, from that in uh, subsequent videos on configuring and using the program to make uh, operation in a packet radio emergency communications network possible. Thanks for watching.